Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today, we are going to spotlight the artwork of animator, designer, cartoonist Chuck Jones. He's a man with a plan, and he is a really, really good artist. Um, Chuck's work is very identifiable. Um, he's created and contributed to many, many iconic uh, characters, and generally speaking, if Chuck has drawn it it's probably the go-to look that you're gonna sort of like and key into and when he doesn't draw it it just doesn't feel right um and uh, i'll point out some examples and some of the pieces that i have that were done by chuck and versus probably done by chuck's studio or um things like that there's a few that i pulled that that i i suspect he probably didn't have as much of a hand in um but uh the, the reason that i wanted to show this image is as a kid, I used to love to draw, and I would get a lot of attention for, for being able to draw pretty good for at a young age. And the one thing that I always said to people, because I didn't get really into art and doing it at any sort of serious level other than as a hobby, um, until I was like 22 or 23 years old, uh, I always thought that this is what artists look like. This is what age you were when you became an artist. This is the age of people that were cartoonists that were comic book artists whatever it was i never saw any young people drawing if you you know saw any kind of indication of someone behind the scenes drawing they all look like they were in their 60s and so um you know it just never ever seemed like uh there was an opportunity for someone that was 15 16 18 years old to do art for a living and uh i i ended up getting into music anyway but uh i thought this was interesting because this is kind of like iconically what i always perceived artists look like and uh it ended up not being the case as the image explosion in comics at least uh proved um but these guys were the lead animators so anyway let's go through some pieces so this was a sketch looks like maybe a gift for someone it's a nice drawing um i'm not going to get overly analytical on these pieces um, we're just going to look at them and kind of ooh and ah. Um, but, uh, anyway, we can just keep going, but this is nice. It's actually pretty cool. Real loose. Um, you can kind of see like he sort of, uh, does a lot of alternating curves. So it's something that you might want to key in on if you draw. This is nice. A lot of a lot of a lot of open lines. Um, that's really cool. He, his faces, there's always a little bit of darkness, and and the way that he draws eyes, they've all got kind of like a I don't know if it's Boris Karloff, but like one of those old school actors. Like it definitely like <laughs> his work has the there's like an edge to it that that again when he isn't working on it, like you really kind of can sense it. Um, and uh man when when we go through this you're gonna see so many iconic characters that he kind of put his uh trademark spin on and i'm not saying that he created all these characters um just saying that like he's kind of a he's he's a really really good artist that worked on him it's great now i've never worked in animation so i don't really know how split up the actual work process is in terms of like to chuck color his own stuff i i kind of would doubt it but um i've seen enough like documentaries on stuff that i would imagine it's broken up but he probably did keyframes and things like that this is a nice drawing there were books when i was a kid that uh they would try to emulate uh chuck's work there were two in particular that i had the walter foster books were by far the ones that i think flew the closest to um trying to capture that and then the jack ham there was a cartooning book that jack ham had um he did actually the adaptations for some of the dr seuss work so this is um for that and you'll see some more pieces as we go along here's a wily e. coyote um sort of study page i'm gonna let the cat out real quick all right you're out but you're not coming back in come on let's go last time out in and out in and out all right yeah these are nice and this is a real fun thing to do if you're actually working on something of your own and uh you want to um devote a little time to something like this over a few days or something like that you can um put together sort of um a sheet of uh character studies this is nice 
some prints. This is really cool. I like this one a lot down here. <laughs> Bull is awesome. Yeah, he's got such a looseness to his lines. I mean, this has obviously been been reprinted on a cell and then hand colored. Um, but uh, man, it's really really cool. This is a great gesture. Like Daffy Duck right there is is really really good. Um, you'll see a lot. Like he tends to draw the Roadrunner at a side view, like and Wiley e. Coyote too. Like it's a lot of that. This is nice too. Um. Not only is this a pretty solid figure, it's actually planted very so like like it's just solidly placed on the ground plane. It's got like a weight to it, um, and uh, it works real well. This is nice. These little watercolor um, sketches that he does are I don't know it could even be oil, but it's probably probably like a watercolor type thing. Um, are real nice. Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, this is nice. Man, that is so kick-ass. I was always a big fan of the backgrounds that they used in Scooby-Doo, and I know that uh, Chuck didn't have anything to do with that, but uh, yeah, the, the painted backgrounds with this cell animation in front of it, I always thought looked really, really cool. Um, some nice texture going on, and uh, this is just great. It's really, really cool. I almost did a uh, Spawn Super Fun Sunday, but I just really wasn't inspired to do it. I know Spawn 300 is coming up, and uh, it's getting a decent amount of sort of attention online. We had Walking Dead just end, and I, I mean, just, I, I, I don't know. I felt like doing something different. This is nice. Nice gesture. Again, really quite loose lines. Can see it here in the black and white more he does hit thick and thin you know and it's worth noting where he puts those and maybe why he places them there I mean he put it there to separate the foot from the gun um, you know so generally speaking someone that draws like this um, his eye is so dialed in he knows just instinctively where to go a little bit heavier to make sure that there's some separation oh this is nice this is really, really solid. You, and it's interesting, too, as we go through these pieces, you'll actually see little bits of influence um, kind of seep into Chuck's own work, some fine art and illustration and stuff like that. Um, so as influential as he was, um, that you can definitely see the impact of other things. And, you know, you figure all this was done for a commercial type work. This doesn't look very Chuck to me. Um, it may be. It's credited as him, but it doesn't. I'm not getting that vibe at all there's none of the the line variation that he would use it just doesn't feel like a chuck drawing again we'll, we'll see a few of those see this does i mean you can see he his stroke is just different there's more energy to it than that last piece so that all comes through in his work across the board as primitive as this is this attitude stays with his work again you see it's I, I always use this example is because there's a lot of people now that will try to sell frauds like like bootleg stuff online if you really know the artist's work you can tell what their stuff looks like um, even in its most primitive forms I always use the example of Jim Lee like Jim Lee can't not draw like Jim Lee and so when people go oh this was a sketch that was done on the go he did it real fast Jim always has like Chuck Jones, characteristics in his art that never ever leave, no matter how few lines they put down. Um, and uh, this is just great. Again, this probably was inked by someone else and even colored by someone else, but but there's enough of Chuck in it that you can kind of like get a sense of it. It's just a great design. This, this was a pretty iconic cartoon, um, very memorable. Again, probably not, not 
finished by Chuck, but there's a little bit of Chuckness in it. This is a Chuck painting. It's actually pretty interesting. It's funny because um, it reminds me a bit of do I have a book in here? Oh, Jeremy Lipke. I don't know if you know his stuff. Not Lip King, but Jeremy Lipke. But uh, um, yeah, it's interesting, and it probably comes from somewhere else. But yeah, if, if you look up Lipke, it's a uh, L I E P K E. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about with the, the look on this. It's a, it's a nice look. Can get a little tiny bit repetitive. This is nice. This is, uh, I think I wrote it, Sniffles. <laughs> oh, yes, this is cool. But again, you can see that he, he's immediately going in. It's kind of like a Frazetta thing where um, there's just a level of energy and intensity that Chuck places into his drawings right out of the gate. Marvin the Martian. I think this is Duck Dodger. Is that the name of the character? I'm not much of an animation expert by any means. I'm just more of a, a peripheral fan. So, excuse my ignorance. This is cool. Great lines. This is nice. Yeah, see, I mean, again, you can just kind of tell it's Chuck. This looks like it might have been ink with a brush. It's nice, though. Yep, really, really cool. It's crazy how loose it is. It looks great, though. His Daffy Duck is super intense, like, like, if we'll we'll see some drawings, I think in a bit. But but uh, his def his Daffy is real dark too. This is nice. Like how he does. Like there's something the proportions that he keeps here. The the size relationships of this area on his faces is so spot on. Um, that it really really just always is like locked in. This is a nice gesture too with his knees all pushed in. But yeah, if you're like like I'm actually gonna pursue after Comic Con, I think a couple of Chuck Jones books. So there's like a documentary or something that I saw online that I might try to pick up. But um, the Walter Foster um, cartooning books have a lot of this type of stuff in it. I mean, it's the Grinch, obviously. This guy is really memorable too. I can't remember the cartoon. I think it's Bugs Bunny, but um, yeah, this is. But again, you see, he's just going in and doing these great shapes. There's not a lot of an underdrawing on this piece in, in particular. I mean, it's pretty much, he goes in and whacks it out pretty quick. This is nice. This is interesting when you zoom in on it, like, like the paint cracked, I guess. I don't even know. That's really weird. I can't imagine that it would crack that much. <laughs> I guess it could. It's this seems weird. It. I wonder what the what the application was. I don't know. It's really weird. It looks like a guitar that's got like um. I forgot what they call it, like when the resin cracks. Oh, this is cool. Oh yeah, it's got kind of like a golf, like the golf ball thing. I forgot about that. <laughs> this outfit is awesome. <laughs> oh man, it's so funny. Oh, that's really nice. That's really, really good. Man, that's such a sick little painting. Again, this is just really solid. Really solid. Even this too. Animals like this, these faces, they're they're trickier to draw than you would think. Like, like anything with a nose that protrudes like that, and then the under jaw and the eyes and the the cheek area can get weird this is pretty loose this looks like he knocked it out pretty fast this is nice 
Oh, so cute. Yeah, I mean, you can see parallels in, in like, you know, um, Bill Watterson or just all, all those guys. They all kind of have similar traits that they have in their work. They always make it fun to look at. It's nice. Like I said, I don't really have anything really super profound to say today. I just wanted to look at this art, so... This was interesting. It's a little dark. Oh, it's a little dark. I wanted to see a little light in it. This doesn't look like Chuck to me. Yeah. This is pretty awesome. And this is like really stylish really designing it's very very cool it's a pretty unique piece when i saw this i was like man mm. it's got like like a little sergio topi or maybe klimt i mean i'm not sure where this look originated from but uh it's it's quite quite designy it looks very cool that's nice That's really cool. <laughs> I love the colors, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. They read a little blurry because they're cells, so they're probably multiple sheets of vellum. Like, there's probably the line art and then the um, under color, so you can read a little, a little blurry sometimes in scans. This was interesting. I don't know what this is from, but this cat is super jacked up. There's another one coming up. This is funny, too. This almost looks like a cow or something. I don't know, a horse? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's another one, too. Look at the mouse. Oh, yeah, this. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it's eyes. Oh, yeah. Pepe Le Pew. He's so cool. Yeah, tight. Oops. This is tight too. He's got it. Oh man, that's so awesome. This is cool too. That's a heavy line right there. Great gesture. It's it's man, the way his chest is protruded out is really nice. I was looking at a Warner Brothers book last night. Oh man, it's so awesome. Um, and uh, it covered a lot of ground, but but it did have some Chuck in it, and it was it was really fun to see. Yeah, see this this way. Oh yeah, this is from Ricky Tiki Tabby, I think. There's another one. Yeah, it's pretty badass. The snake is great. There's another page or two of this. Oh yeah, this is really good too. This is very very Chuck. It's the, it's the way that he does the eyes. He's got that slope in the eyes that makes them um, kind of intense. Yeah, that's really really cool. <laughs> Joe, Tom. Um, yeah, Tom always looks angry. Like, his Tom is super intense. It's cute. Yeah, this is nice. Hard to say if it's him, but... Yeah. Really, really good face. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This was interesting. I had never seen this before, as far as I know. I don't know what exactly it was from. This is nice. This is really good. Man, it's so loose. Loose but tight. That's great too. 
yeah, man, that's like, man, he's flying by the seat of his pants there. That is a wild drawing. Works great, though. Looks really, really good. Really good. Some more Ricky Ticky Tabby. So he really plays with the um, stretch on that mongoose. That's cool. Nice, nice form on that head. Oh, this was so cute. This little kitten with the uh, <laughs> protecting it was a really funny cartoon. But these are great. This is so Chuck. This is where you can really see the. Oh man, my OBS is recording. Yeah. Check this thing, make sure it's recording. But yeah, this is a not only a really kind of heartfelt cartoon, but uh, a lot of characterization in it. Man, those are so great. It's yeah, man, it's really really cool. But yeah, check out that Walter Foster book too. I'm telling you, the um, it has pages of this stuff. I used to just grind through that and the Jack Ham cartooning um, book. And uh, I got really, really good at cartooning as a kid because of because of those books. And even though I never stayed with it, um, it's definitely something that's in my um, sort of, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, it kind of stays with you. I think the stuff that you learn as a kid with art it definitely um, is probably the most deepest ingrained in you. Oh, this is really cool too. This witch is awesome. I just love how whenever she would run, like I don't know if they were bobby pins or what was coming off her, but there's always like little uh, things. And and uh, the animation at this time was really scratchy. Like there was a real edge to it. I, J. J. Scott Campbell and I used to share an office, and we were talking about the Disney movies. And there's an era of Disney movies where the 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 pieces I don't think were inked, and so they were shot from pencils. 101 Dalmatian, I think, is one of them, the original one. Um, and they look really, really good because of that. As, as funny as that sounds, but there's like a, a quality to two or three of the movies in that period where, because they were on a budget, um, the art was not as refined and uh, really looked great. So it might be something to look into. Yeah, like they didn't, they didn't use a clamp. This is awesome. <laughs> the background paintings are so cool too. Again, I... I doubt that it's Chuck doing them but um, yeah animation backgrounds are great so here's some of the Dr. Seuss work he gets it he does it well this is nice pretty crazy this is nice too man his line is great really good <laughs> That's a nice face. That's two. Actually, they're, they're all quite good. That's a nice painting right there. This has got some pizzazz. The wood grain, too, is quite quite well done. That's like, man, almost just got photo style. <laughs> it's crazy. But look how simple that is and how realistic that looks. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, these companies, man, back in the day, they had some really, really talented traditional artists. Oh yeah, <laughs> the sheep book is awesome. Dunk. Man, that's so sick. Some really, really sick lines going on in there. It's really nice. And again, this is very solid for how loose it is. Those are some complex forms he's indicating. This is a cool piece. Yeah, his Tom is so intense. I remember as a kid, we would watch reruns of Tom and Jerry when we'd get home from school. Like, they'd have cartoons on. And so we would watch those. They were on earlier, and then the sort of more contemporary stuff would come on. They would do, like, old school stuff. And, and uh, um, when it didn't look like this, it didn't look the same. There's, like, eras of it where it sort of softens, and uh, I didn't like it as much. And then you find out later why, and then you go, oh, okay, I get it. It's like Scooby-Doo kind of changed. This is nice, too. Like, he, his fine art paintings are actually very, very cool. Let's see. Let's 
really interesting. This, I'm assuming this is Chuck Jones, but it may not be, but man, that's so badass. I think when he would do maybe non-comic work, he signed it with his full name. So it looks like his signature. I mean, even his signature has the energy of his art. This is really cool, too. This is great. We had seen a, a better scan of this before. This is cool. Love the style of everything. This is great. Really, really good pose. This is nice, too. <gasps> Pepe! Oh, yeah, he thought the cat was a skunk. Something happened, and she got pain on her tail, I think. <laughs> like the, the smell coming off his tail. That's pretty funny. Oh, these are nice. Wow, this is old school. Don Coyote. I don't know if you can hear my cat. It's at the door <laughs> crying the whole time I'm doing the video. Super distracting. That's cool. <laughs> Horse, it's like the i in um hercules uh the way that they did um there's a horse i think in a hercules uh, movie that is really really well done it's, it's not chuck jones but this is awesome man it's so good <laughs> oh yeah it's cool I, this is, I think Horton hears a who. Again, even his loose sketches, man, they're just on point. On point. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> the dog. That's nice. That's really cool too. Oh yeah, there's my Tom. Look at that face. He's scary. That's those dark eyebrows. <laughs> and Jerry was such he was so cute, but such a punk. Oh, he's washing the kitten. <laughs> oh, those are cool. That's a little blurry. Oh, man, that's really nice. This doesn't look like Chuck, though, to me. Probably isn't, but uh, still kind of a neat tribute piece there. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's Chuck Jones paint. That's great. I think that this thing was just called The Monster. Oh, it's a really good cartoon. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, last one. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good day. This almost looks like a self-portrait in a weird way. But, yeah, uh, I hopefully that was at least somewhat fun to check out, and uh, I will talk to you all later. Comic-Con is coming up. Um, I, I'm going to definitely film there. I don't know if I'll live stream because the quality... Um, was buffering a lot and it was kind of a shame because I ended up losing really good footage um, that if I would have just recorded and uploaded later would have been better so it's it's the you know the coolness of doing the live stream versus horrible quality isn't worth it I don't think you know what I mean so I had some really good stuff of Kim Jong Ji drawing just as an example but it was all just look like shit so all right We'll figure it out, but uh, Comic-Con starts uh, 17th, 18th of July. All right, later.